So someone I work with approached me and said he had heard him into woodworking and was looking for someone to make a custom-made bassinet. He wanted the bassinet to be a family hand-me-down that can be passed around the family anytime as needed. He showed me some photos of some bassinets to use as kind of a design template, and I got started from there. The bassinet I'm making in this video is made out of solid maple. After cutting the boards down to their approximate final lengths, I took a little time to try and match up the grain patterns to make the boards look more natural. I used this chart to give me a better idea of what dimensions to make the bassinet. The worst thing I could do is make it too small. I then glued together several different panels. This panel here would make up the base, and then there would be other panels that make up the sidewalls, the headboard, and the footboard. While that was drying, I cut down a couple of thinner boards of maple that I would use to make the rockers from. After the glue was dry on the base, I took all the clamps off and I used a digital angle finder to set the table saw to 15 degrees. This would allow the sidewalls to be angled out after they're attached. And I also put the 15 degree angle on the sidewalls as well. The sidewalls were small enough to go through the planer to get things level. But the base was too wide and had to be sanded. Unfortunately, it looks like one of the planer blades had a nick in it, causing this ridge down the entire board, so I still had to sand that off to get everything level. Once that was done, I cut the base to its final length on the miter saw. I did this by cutting through most of the way on one pass, and then flipping it over and cutting through the rest of the way. I changed gears here and used a scrap piece of plywood to cut down a template that I would use for making the rockers. I figured it was best to make a template out of scrap plywood because if I tried it on my first attempt on the maple, I was afraid that I would just ruin the piece. I used a thin strip of plywood to trace the curve of what would be the bottom of the rocker. I then trace the curves on a couple of glasses just to add a little bit of character to the rockers. I was a little indecisive on what to go with, which is why there are so many lines here, but in the end I just scratched out everything I wanted to remove. But because I was kind of freehanding where the glass placement was, I was afraid that one end wasn't going to be identical to the other, so I decided to cut the rocker template in half and then I would just flip the template over to mirror the other side when I trace it. I took the now half template over to the bandsaw and roughly cut out the shape. And then I took it over to the oscillating sander and slowly sanded up to the line. The result was a nice smooth curve, or so I thought. So I took the template over to the pieces of maple and traced one side and then flipped it over and traced the other side. After the shape was traced, I took the piece back over to the bandsaw and roughly cut it down and then finished it up in the same manner on the oscillating sander. To the naked eye, the curve appears to be just fine, but there was something not quite right about it. Both of the pieces sit level, 
when placed down. But when I put the base on and rocked it back and forth, there was something I just didn't like. It was like I could feel some imperfect ridges underneath. I wasn't really sure what I could do about that at this point, so I just moved on to the rest of the build. I used a self-centering doweling jig to add dowel holes to the sides of the base. These dowels would give me a way to attach the long sides to the base at the 15 degree angle. But that 15 degree angle made things a little bit more complicated. I ended up cutting out some wedges that were angled at 15 degrees to give me something to press against while drilling the dowel holes. Once I had both of the sideboards on, I cut out the head and footboards on the miter saw. So I've put off building a workbench for a long time now. And partially through building this bassinet, I decided to just buy this one. It works well as a small workbench and has some built-in features like clamps and dog holes. And it also collapses down into a sawhorse. I did a quick test fit just to make sure everything was matching up at this point. And then because the headboard was starting to look a bit vampire-ish, I cut a curve into the top using a similar method as the rockers. It wasn't until after this that I realized the sandpaper on the spindle was falling down. Not unlike how your pants might fall down if you were to bob up and down excitedly like this. The footboard needed to have a different look to distinguish it from the headboard, so I lined it up and then just made a straight cut from the top of one sideboard to the other. I figured the best way to make this cut was to use the table saw, but after I started cutting I realized that I forgot to draw the line connecting both of the marks that I made, so I had to stop and do that real quick. Derp. Now on to fixing those rockers. I took the longest piece of scrap that I could find laying around and anchored it down at one end so that it would swivel. The plan was to hold my router up against the other end of the piece and then use that semicircular motion to cut out the bottom of a template that I could then use on the rockers. But in usual fashion, it took me a few tries because a problem popped up. Because I was using two tables for this setup, the two moved independently of each other, making for an uneven cut. So I clamped the two tables together to fix that and then tried again, finally getting the results I wanted. To transfer that cut onto the actual workpiece, I used a flush trim bit in the router that uses a bearing on the bottom. This bearing traces that template as it cuts the workpiece to the same shape. The end result here was much better than my first attempt. I drilled a few holes in the base that would be used later for attaching the rockers, but I was noticing that this bassinet was starting to shape up to be rather large, so I wanted to add some handles onto the side to make it a bit easier to move around. I went to Hobby Lobby and bought a couple different sizes of heart shapes that I could trace out for handles. After I determined which size was better, I centered and traced it on both sides, and then used both a hole saw and a jigsaw to cut out the shape. I 
I then took it over to the spindle sander and cleaned it up a bit. And this time, instead of his pants falling down, they were literally burning off. But hey, that heart was looking pretty good. Since the hearts are designed to be used as handles, I used a roundover bit to soften the edges and make it easier on the hands. I also put a roundover on most of the other parts. I just had to be careful not to round over any of the edges that would be joined to other pieces. Prior to being joined, all the pieces got sanded with 80 and then 120 grit sandpaper. I used Tight Bond 3 for the glue up with the assistance of those 15 degree wedges. I found it was easiest to fold some tape over on itself to make double sided tape and stick the wedges to the outside of the bassinet before clamping them down. After the sides were glued on and dry, I glued on the headboard and the footboard. Afterwards, there was a little bit of glue squeeze out in some of the joints, so I removed it with a combination of a sanding block and even a chisel. I then spread everything down with water and a rag in order to pop the grain and then sand it off. This is to prevent the grain from popping after finish is applied, which would leave a rough surface. Of course, now everything is covered in sawdust. So I applied some mineral spirits with a rag to clean it up. The finish I'm using is Rubio Monocoat, and this is actually my first time using this kind of finish, but I found that spreading it out with a gloved hand seemed to work pretty well before finishing with this applicator pad. So the guy I was building this for brought some lettering and some decorative animals to put on the bassinet. I rubbed all the lettering with some dark walnut danish oil just to make them stand out. I didn't rub the animals though because that's illegal. And then I attached everything with CA glue and an accelerator. The last bit to do was screwing on the rockers. I attached the middle screw on each of the rockers and then put the bassinet up on the workbench and used a square to get things aligned before screwing in from underneath. I'm really happy with how this bassinet turned out. I like the idea of it being passed down for generations and I think it's really cool that I got to make it. This was definitely a labor of love for me.